it, you keep desiring it, you keep seeing it spiritually, you keep meeting God's requirement, you keep pulling, you keep possessing it, you keep fighting for it, you keep prophesying, you keep drawing from God, you keep receiving it, you keep thanking God in advance, and then one day you shall step into what you believed. You must see it in advance. See that victory, see that breakthrough, see that answer, see that testimony in advance. And with God, there is nothing to break. There is nothing that is for other people. Everything is nothing good shall you withhold from those that walk uprightly. So, if you see that God is silent, start examining your life. Check yourself to every and confess sin and just say, search me, O oh Lord. If you see that God is silent, you just recognize God's authority and know that God has no obligation to answer you or inform you in anything. He is sovereign, he is God, but also he is obligated to his promise. He may not have any obligation to each person, but he is obligated to his word. He is duty bound to his word. You would rather bankrupt heaven than for any of his promises to fail. So, when you see that God is silent, keep talking to him. Don't be silent because he's silent. So when God seems silent, it doesn't mean you should doubt him and stop praying. That's when you keep pressing on, he's within hearing distance. Sometimes God is silent because he's already in your situation to surprise you. He's already in the fire. When the four Hebrew children, when, when, when there were three, when, when the three Hebrew children were cast in the fire, God was already in that situation. God knows your deadlines, he knows what you are passing through, and he already knows how to answer you. When God is silent, he's preparing you for what you prayed for. Some of the things that we prayed for, we are not yet spiritually mature to handle them. Sometimes, one time he says, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the spirit of truth is come, he shall reveal all things. So sometimes when God is silent, he's waiting for you. Because he has given you power, so you are waiting on God when God is waiting on you. It's not everything that God has to do for you. Some things, you must speak the word yourself. You speak the word and go forth. There was a time when Moses was silent, waiting for God to speak, and God was silent, waiting for Moses to speak. So they were waiting for each other, and God had already given him the power. Some of these things that you are praying for God to do, he has given you power to go ahead and do it under his guidance. So, when God is silent, um, there is a quotation where the prophet says, um, he said, why do you wait for me to move you every time? When is your reward? So you don't always wait for God to move you. And you must move by faith under inspiration, under revelation. So when God is silent, he's moving elements. There are things that are happening in the background. Yes. So when God is silent, He has something better for you. Maybe you are praying for something, but God has something higher, so you rather hold things in silence until you catch the revelation. Yes. Sometimes He's waiting for you to prove yourself worthy of the promise. Yes. So there's the last trial that you must overcome for God to come upon your situation. Sometimes when God is silent, he's fighting and seeing battles for you. When the Daniel, God says, for the, from the first day you begin to pray, he heard. But he was fighting battles against family spirits, against territorial devils. So God is a master strategist. When, he, when he's fighting for you, when he's silent, he's strategizing how to bring it in a way that makes a greater testimony. He's a master strategist, he's a master planner, he's a master architect, he's a master sculptor. He knows how to bring it to pass. When God seems silent, he's making you pass through the process of becoming the better version of yourself that can handle the blessing better. Sometimes when God just gives you the blessing, you won't manage it. So you will let, you, let you go through the process. You pass through your fires, you pass through your tulipas, you pass through your cave of Abdullah, you pass through your grinding mills, you pass through the waters, you pass through the flood, until you become the better version of yourself. When he's quiet, he's building your character so that you can contain the blessing. When he's quiet, he's testing for your reaction. To see how you will react when God is testing your patience. So he is waiting for you to call him on that scene. God wants to hear.
hear your voice about your situation. Yeah. What are you saying about this situation? When God decided we maybe we have not attained the capacity to sustain what he's bringing. Because God cannot give you what you cannot manage. So he kept, when Saul lost the donkeys, God kept them going. Going until when they reached where God wanted them to reach. Someone said, there is a servant of God here. God was breaking his silence. So sometimes God is silent. We think he's silent, but he has already answered you. The answer is around you. You are sitting on the potentials, on what God has already given you. So when God is silent, it doesn't mean that God doesn't see. It doesn't mean that he cannot help. When God is silent, um, just because God is silent, it doesn't mean that he's absent. So in whatever prayer request that you have, let's say the 100% answer, it's possible for God to move on everything that you are desiring today. We're already in the season of the third pool where we speak things into existence and let that glorious power of God read your requests before you even speak them and make them manifest. Sometimes in silence is leaving it to your faith to create the results. Brother says sometimes I see it getting dark around a person, but I don't decay it because their faith can change the things. So your faith can speak and make things happen. So when God is silent, is testing your faith to see, are you going to hold on? Are you going to soldier on? So when God is silent, it's training ground to train and mold us. So look at this effect of God's silence. The women were barren in the Bible. Sarah was going to bring a prophet, Isaac. Rebecca was going to bring a prophet, Jacob. Uh, Rachel was going to bring a prophet, Joseph. Uh, Hannah was going to bring a prophet, Samuel. And, John, uh, and Elizabeth was going to bring a prophet, more than a prophet, John. So the silence was because of the gravity of the results. So the silence of God in your life tells you how much is about to be released. So Sarah becomes mother of many nations coming from barrenness. So sometimes God leaves you in a pit because your story is going to turn, it's going to rewrite your story. So when you are in God, you are more than a conqueror, you are more than your situation. So when God was silent, Rabbi was teaching on church edges, God was writing and drawing the church edges behind. Meaning he's working behind the scenes. He's bringing destiny helpers. He's bringing the capacity. He's bringing um, some links and connections to make your answer come. So when God is silent, like when John was weeping, he thought God, there was no one to open the book or to read, to, to open to, to lose the scenes thereof. But God was behind the scenes. He had already prevailed. Why? When the same spot where he was weeping, that's when he started celebrating. The same place where you are suffering, God will bless you. So, when he seems to be silent, he is working on both end for a permanent solution. Some of the things that you are desiring, it needs a preparation the other end. God cannot just say, receive this when the other end is not ready. For example, he had to first have the cup of the Amorites full for him to break his silence. So one time we prayed for this day, it was 2010, in Pumla South there. And it took time, up to 2017, seven years, when we were saying, God give us a stay. Pastor Wallace said, no, this story, we tried our best. Then when we finally got that stand, God visited the man, the owner of the stand, in a dream, and said, give yourself to the message and give the stand for free. So when we, God was silent, he was waiting on the man, preparing the man. So when God has been silent, he's working things around you. What you have prayed for is touching your children, is touching your husband, is preparing your property, is preparing your breakthrough, is preparing your, your promotion, is preparing your vacancy, is preparing your new dimension, is preparing your faith, is preparing new dimensional spheres that you shall step into and what you have believed, what you shall step into it. It tells, you 
know, when he appeared to Joseph, there was a long silence. Then he appears after a long silence. He says, Arise, take that child and his mother, for those that sought your life and uh, the child's life are dead. So you are silent with Joseph when they were in Egypt. They were waiting for the next instruction. When are we going back? This child is a Nazarene. This child is a deliverer. But God was silent. Then he comes when he has went on the other end. He says, now I break my silence. Arise. Take your CV. Arise. Take your papers. Arise. Take your pen. Arise. Do this. Because the climate is now ready for you to go and prosper in your land where you are destined to prosper there. So he says with Elizabeth, it's now six months with her who was called barren. So why was Elizabeth barren for so long? Because if God made her have the child, probably the child John was not going to match the life of Christ. By the time Christ comes, maybe John was eight years or even maybe dead at that time. But God is a strategist. When he's quiet, when he's silent, he's not silent. He's moving pieces. He's arranging things and moving elements in your life. When he came down in the garden, he, he, after the creation, creating the world, being void without form, he started speaking, breaking his silence, saying, let there be. And there was. When he spoke, he broke all evil atmospheres that were around the earth. When he speaks, he's the final voice. Your situation is not the final voice. Your circumstances are broken by the power of that voice. Don't forget that when God is silent, he's doing something for you. When God is silent, he's preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. It is not that God is silent. Sometimes our distractions are so loud. We have voices that are deadening the voice of God. So when God is silent, it's time to check our life. So God is able to restore the years of his silence. When he's silent, he's not wasting time. He's training you to become a better recipient of what he's bringing. And he'll say, I will restore the years of the locusts. When he was quiet, looking at the locusts, he was quiet, looking at the caterpillar and the palmer. He says, no, my silence is not wasted. The days and the years when God was silent shall be repaired, shall be repaired. That's why when Joseph came out of prison after the years, things had to happen so fast. He had to get a wife that night, he had to get promotion, a new robe. Things can happen that this very night. You can get healed, you can get delivered, you can get answered, promoted. You can get everything at once in one night. Because God repairs those years. God's silence is our opportunity to remain faithful, even when we are unsure of his intentions in our lives. So, the book of Esther, the whole book of Esther, the, the name of God is not mentioned. Because God was hiding behind the scenes, moving elements. That night, the king could not sleep because God was busy. His name was not coming out. He was not seen visible, but he was silent behind the scenes. Brother, where you are going, you will wonder, how did I reach this level? There is an unseen hand. There is a power that transports you. The prophet says, it seems strange when a person has done all that they can do. And they fulfilled every request that God has asked them to do. And still God is silent. When you've done all that God has requested you to do, and still is silent, be sure to know God. Remember that faith is silent. Um, He's only testing your faith to see. And God always loves to do that. The longer the silence, the greater the miracle. The longer it takes, the greater the miracle. So, when Joseph waited, it's because he was immature. He was a young boy who was always reporting his brothers that they've done this and done that, and God could not take that 70 year old boy. Even the way he was reporting his dreams that I saw you bowing, you, you, you are still having no wisdom. He would just go and say every mischief of their brother, tell them. But that is not the kind of person needed before Pharaoh. Amen. When Pharaoh can say, he, he can say, God has made me a father to Pharaoh, not a boy to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So God, when he's silent, is preparing you. David had to wait. After killing Goliath, 
yet to pass through some meanders, yet to run away, yet this share of the cave of Abdullah, there are caves where God hides you and from prominence until you become the person worthy of adoption. There is a time when Noah waited 120 years, God was silent. And when God broke the silence, Noah thought hey, God has broken his silence. Then there was another seven day silence. There are pages of silence and pages of answers. But in all things, God is moving elements and answering you. Moses had to wait for eight years. Brother, if God had not trained him the way he trained him, he was going to give up with those kind of people. He was going to give up when they were memory, the way they were memory. But he was so trained by God. So when Isaiah said the virgin shall conceive, we waited for 800 years. That was one of the longest wait for the greatest person. For the greatest person ever lived. A greater than John the Baptist. A greater than Jonah. And when Christ appeared on the scene, when he was he just he had little flashes, 12 years there. No, there was a long wait up to 12 years we had not heard about Christ. Amen. Then from 12 years to 30, we didn't hear anything about Christ. Amen. But the Bible was saying he grew in wisdom, Amen. in stature, Amen. in favor. As God is silent, let there be growth Amen. in your capacity. Amen. Let there be growth in your stature to receive. Amen. God, for, for Abraham, they had to wait 25 years and God answered the body change happened. And whatever God promised is going to happen. Abraham says, when he was now an old man, God healed him. He even wrote a stanza that we are singing that I cried for healing both night and day, but faith was not forgotten by the Father above. He sent down his sign. To you a sign is coming. That sign was known by the one to whom it is sent. When God sends spiritual signal to say that season of waiting is over, remember you shall not wait forever. That season of waiting is going to end. And let it be that this night, that season of waiting will end. Now what triggers that move of God? What, who are those people who broke God's silence, who caused God to move upon their situation? When the third, first pool was signified, Remember the first, second, and third pool were even written in mountains, in peaks before Brahma was born. Yes. God already knew that this is a peak, this is a valley. Your ups and downs were known before you were born. So, but who triggered the first pool? Because in the cave there, God says, not even cancer can stand before your prayers. When he came, demonstrating, tell, telling people that I received something from the Lord. While he was ministering, there was a nurse on a stretcher. Yes. That nurse was eaten by cancer. She was born, but her faith was not eaten. Yes. She triggered the first manifestation. Yes. It was not a healthy, strong person, yes. but it was a healthy, strong faith. Yes. In her situation, she overtook all others to be the first recipient of the first pool. And Brabham says, three days from now, you'll be injecting patients. And she rose from the stretcher, three days, she was back to her normal. Because God, when he breaks in silence, he breaks your yoke, he breaks your chains, he breaks your captivity, he breaks your limitation, he breaks your sickness, he breaks your, your boundaries. The second pool was already decayed, but it was not even in Branham Tepanem. It was in Calgary. It was, I think it was, um, it was 19, I've forgotten the year, but there's a sister who was on her bed. If I remember well, Black Brown says, I see this, this, this person. It had not happened anyway, but Black Brown had told the congregation, that one day I shall step into this. Amen. Keep telling people that one day I shall step into this. Amen. When that happened, it's the congregation that reminded Baba, yes, you told us. Amen. One day your wife will remind you that, yes, you say this. 
When you are now inside that house, they will say, yes, you say this. When your children are being baptized, they will say, yes, you say this. When you enter those realms of dreams and spiritual happenings, someone will say, yes, you told us about this. When he was ministering, something for the first time happened, and he says, I see a woman. And he said in a white bedroom and wearing brown pajamas. And she's sitting on a bed and she says, If I can only see Brother Branham, I'll be okay. Uh -huh. Now that's the, they are dangerous people in a service. Yeah. That is the breed that get instant results. Yeah. So right there, Branham says, Oh yes, it's you, that woman here. Yes. And that same service, he sees a young girl who is seven years, who is chased by a yellow dog. And, and then she changes, she becomes 12 years old. She's seated in a classroom, then someone threw a pen and it hit her right eye. And she became, oh, this lady is grown up, it's now you. You are healed in Jesus' name. Now, these were people who triggered the promise that was hanging over them. The promises of God in the capacity of this service, everything is hanging over you and you can trigger it for a rare type of faith where God can say, I've not seen this faith, not in Israel. Even the third pool, the happenings of the third pool, it was not God's voice, it was Sister head for the first time who said, this is nothing but the truth. And then a super atmosphere. Sister Hetty was always declaring that I shall baptize my children. Yes. But when she said that, God broke his silence and the boys were baptized. So, today you can go further than Sister Hetty. Just say salvation of my boys plus the million dollars plus the healing of death in the plus by my, my promotion plus. You can ask in abundance. You don't stop, even God himself won't stop you. He will say, keep asking that your joy may be full. So this, the third pool was already written. Everything was written. Do you know that even the complexes that Abraham had were for, for retaining the mountains there. Even the death of the wife, the, the, the valley in 1937, then the, the, the time when he got tired and came out, all those things were already foreordained. But it needed someone to trigger it. Actually, in 1951, that's when he had uh, amibiasis. And he was actually off the field for six months. He could not see a vision for six months. So, Brother Branham, he had a dry patch where he could not see a vision for six months. But when the vision started, it was the highest peak because of the highest, longest wait. After a longest wait, expect the biggest breakthrough. Who are these people who could just pull God down and break the silence of God? People who could ground aeroplanes by the type of their faith. People who could grab the hem of his garment. People who could tear roofs. People who could see like the sign of foundation who could say whatever when God is silent is going to speak anyhow. Now even a silent picture came out in this message the, the thy word. He started meaning coming the pillar of art came out because of the woman who believed for her healing. The God of the Bible can come out of the pages of the Bible. There was 400 years silence that was broken by prayer warriors like Joseph and Amram. Yeah. When people start praying, there is a silence that will be broken. Yeah. So don't let threatening voices drown the still small voice of God. Yeah. The voice of God must be heard. So God still speaks through his words and through the anointing and atmosphere of his presence. He still speaks through dreams. He still speaks through inspiration. He still speaks through promptings of the Holy Spirit. He still speaks through things around us. He still speaks through visions. He still speaks through our thoughts. He still speaks through revelation. He still speaks in the song service. He still speaks through our challenges. He still speaks through the people we meet. He still speaks through steps and sermons. He speaks through nature. He speaks through his silence. He speaks through art, poetry, and, and the books. He speaks through the gifts. He 
speaks through audible voices. He speaks through prayer when he interceded with groans that cannot be uttered by men. He speaks through unanswered prayers. So God even speaks through the unsaid things. Who told Rebecca to water the camels? Who told uh, Abraham to pay tithes? Who told the, even Nebuchadnezzar that the fourth man is the son of God, that God is a son? Who told Adam the names of the animals? Who told Elizabeth that when she said, Where from where is coming the mother of my Lord? How did she know this Lord and that this is the mother of the Lord? God speaks through silence. Even the Queen of Sheba says, How far it was not told me? God speaks, told uh, Abraham that this is Jehovah Jireh. He speaks through the unsaid. So, even in Mount, Mount Transfiguration, who told the disciples that this is Moses, this is Elijah, there were no introductions, but something told them, He that is an ear, hears the silence of God. Amen. When you are meeting a challenge, you need to know that, are you with us or with them? Amen. You need to know that this obstacle, is it the devil fighting, or is it God saying, make a detour, there is a better route. You need to have an ear to hear that. So when God uh, speaks, you hear even from your theophany, God is in control, even when things seem out of control. So when things seem out of, like they are falling apart, they are falling in place, because all things work together for good. And in all things, we are more than conqueror. And we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And God can make all things new. So everything is falling in place for a believer. How do you handle? God's silence. Your attitude to God's silence. When God is silent, what is your attitude? This is the attitude of Job. He says, though he slays me, yet will I worship him. Yes. Though he slays me, even if he doesn't, the, the attitude of Shadrach Mishik was, even if he doesn't, we are still going for it. Your attitude to the silence of God determines your results. So, in Habakkuk, this is his attitude to the silence of God. He says, although the fig shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vine, the vapor of the olive shall fail, and all the fields shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no head in the stores, yet will I rejoice in the Lord, and I will join in the salvation. Now, if you don't have this attitude, you wait longer, God will be silent for longer because this is what he wants for him to start speaking. God is God even when he's silent. Our God is not dead. God knows even when he's silent. He's walking in the midst of chemists and say, I know, I know. He's walking in your family, in your crisis, in your, in, in, in your storms and say, I know, I know, I know. So whatever you are going to tell him, he has seen it. He actually knows that that's what is happening. He is what your situation demands. He knows what you are passing through. He knows the number of your hair. He knows how much you can bear. He knows your address. He knows your prayer request before you pray. He knows your weakness and he will strengthen you. He knows your deadlines. He knows how long you have been in that situation. When God breaks his silence, it's the end of a dry page. It's the end of a testimony drought. If you have been having a testimony drought and the last time you had the breakthrough has been long, rejoice this night. God will move in his unseen hand and arrange things to your favor. It's the end of stagnation. It's the end of the season of distress. It's the end of a bad chapter. It's the end of barrenness. When God breaks his silence, Satan is silenced. When God breaks his silence, demons are silenced. Your storms are silenced. Your critics are silenced. Your sickness is silenced. Your situation is silence. So this night, we're here to silence every devil because God has blotted out the head right of God in his battle against you. Everything that was against you will fail. If God says you shall make it, who is that person who says you shall not make it? It doesn't matter what resources. God is the master to make everything fall into place. I believe in instant results. When God speaks, he is the master to bring the results. It's not your ability. I want you to welcome your season of answered prayers. You are not going to hear other people's testimonies only, but your testimony is coming. Your victory is coming. 
God will anoint you to step into those heights. God will provide the means for you to reach where you long to reach. The reason why you are longing for that height is because there is a deep calling to a deep. And there is bound to be a deep somewhere to respond to that deep. It doesn't matter your storms and your challenges. When God says it's time for another chapter, we close all evil chapters. We close all other chapters. And we say, welcome we to a new chapter, to a season of victories, to a season of testimonies, to a season of breakthroughs, to a season of miracles, miracles that you have never seen before. Many of you have only been able to update your WhatsApp status, but today want to update your prayer status, want to update your financial status, want to update the supernatural levels that you dwell in because there is a realm and a sphere and a spot where when you get to that spot, miracles become a regular routine. If God has called you to be somewhere, you will be faithful to get to there. If you are supposed to get a visa, God knows how to give you that visa. If you are supposed to be married, God will make sure they see you are married. If you are supposed to have your company, whether you have the capital, the anointing is the capital. If you live your whole life in Shandarong, God will make a way for you. God will make sure that when he speaks his voice, it's a voice of deliverance. It doesn't matter what cycles your family was going through. It doesn't matter if in your family they don't have weddings, you shall have the first one. It doesn't matter if there's disaster and chaos, but from the economy of heaven, God is able to give you your as desire even now. God's voice is a voice of restoration and I say everything that was stolen from you, let it come sevenfold. Whatever was stolen financially or spiritually, let it come sevenfold in the name of Jesus. Yes, we are fighting and we are wrestling. By this we are defeating those spirits. Those spirits have no say in your life. The devil has no part in your life and you, have, you should not be in talking terms with the devil. But crush him under your feet. This is the voice of healing. Let someone who has been sick for a long time be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the great physician is here and we put every spirit under our feet. Financial healing. Spiritual healing. Marital healing. Let God heal your soul's diseases. Claim your victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Claim your financial breakthrough. If you have been spending on doctors this year, that money is needed back. You must be restored because you are not a temple of sicknesses. You are a temple of the Holy Ghost. Speak the word over your situation and watch God work on your behalf. It doesn't matter how long you have been in that situation. That is not your destiny. That is a temporary pastor. You are passing through that situation. It doesn't matter how long you have been in that status. Upgrade your status today. The Bible says, I will give you keys to the kingdom. Meaning there is no one key. Prayer is one of the keys. But by prayer alone, you may not arrive. You need prayer and revelation and expectation. When you expect something, no matter what happens, keep expecting it. Let nothing stop your expectation. Let nothing reduce your expectation. Don't adjust your prayer request, but only add more and more and more. Don't subtract things. If there is something that you are desiring some years ago and you are not talking about it anymore, I want you to start talking about it. It has never failed. Your testimony will never die. God is able even this night as I feel his presence and I feel the sound of abundance of rain. Let me declare that your testimony is next in Jesus' name. These are the keys. You need total obedience. Total surrender. Total separation. Total redemption. You need the revelation. Right with the attitude. Realization. Repentance. You need determination. Desperation. Decision. You need to make a decision and say, this is not my level as a Christian. This is not what I'm... If I've been celebrating in this level, I want to advance. Yes, I, I, I respect all your testimonies that for past faith, but let them rise and be testimony for a car. Your testimony for renters, let them become testimonies for a house. 
all your testimonies you can upgrade because where they came from there is more there when you took that testimony there is more you can get more and more and more and more the keys are sincerity the keys are saying the right words even when things are not right the keys are surrender and sacrifice the keys are prayer persistence and perseverance and positivity so God when you come to God and you are part of the word God cannot deny himself because it's the word as the his word you shall not be denied God who created your eyes sees what you are passing through who created your hands can touch you he created your feet he can come where you are I want you to see throughout the Bible that there are unseen things that happen in our spiritual services our services are not natural our God is an unusual God so never get used to a service come in the spirit like Simeon came in the spirit expecting something somewhere as you are speaking you answer the rhema the word of God for your situation will arrive and you shall break that status quo and rise where you shall not come back again to that level anymore while Daniel was praying there was warfare as we are ministering now, there is warfare because the devil does not just release like that, but there is no option but to release. Your funds that we held must be released. Your children that was held must be released. Your marriage that was held must be released. Your spiritual levels that we held must be released in Jesus' name. When Daniel was praying, there was war in the heavenlies. And when Cornelius was praying in the ninth hour, he saw evidently in a vision. He was not yet baptized in the name of Jesus Christ like you. He had, didn't have the Holy Spirit like you. He didn't know the sins and the thunders like you. But he saw evidently. Amen. When you see something, no one can talk you out of it. Yeah. When you see your ought to be condition, no one can talk you out of it. While Abraham was praying, when the wine had gone out, it was being created. Yeah. There are things that have been created as we are speaking now. Yeah. While Abraham was praying, the king sword fell on his hand. So these are things that happen as we pray. While he was praying in that cave, there the 200 pounds men appeared. The man who knows where you are going will appear and take you there. It doesn't need a human hand. Now, this picture is a pet picture because it has George Carter, it has Sister Head. There is a team that makes things happen. George Carter, while she was reading the book, God broke the silence. She was reading Jesus Christ the same. She was reading and saying, Amen. Reading and saying, Amen. You know, your Amen triggers an atmosphere somewhere. Your Amen is magnetic. It will magnetize that job. It will magnetize that thing that is in your heart. Your desire is magnetic. When you desire something, before you even say it, God will make it happen. Amen. While Paul and Silas were praising God, the chains broke. So there are things that cause God to break in silence. While Abraham was speaking, like while Peter had spoke, someone rose from the wheelchair. This is the kind of God that we worship. So, God can turn the tide. If you are sick and tired of your situation, if you are sick and tired of things that are happening around you, sometimes it takes 10 years to get to that one year that will change your life. You have to keep going with a big God, with a God who is bigger than your mountains, is bigger than your storms. This is the time of your visitation. When God visits you, all things are changed. All things become new when God comes into your life. Now, look, look at how God finally brings your testimony. So when Job said, I know my Redeemer lives, God broke his silence and brought everything that Job lost. But how did God bring what Job lost? How did Job finally has more than what he had? This is how the scripture puts it. Um, it says, the Lord blessed the later end of Job than his beginning. The Bible says that the daughter of Tyra shall come with the gifts 
and the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. So God will find people who has what you are looking for and come to bring to you because of your prayer. You shall meet strangers that are not strangers in the program of God who are carrying their missing peace. This is how Job became rich. The Bible says in Job 42 verse 10, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And they came to him, all his brethren and all his sisters, and all that were acquainted for him before. These people had disappeared from his life. But when God broke his silence, they came back and they ate bread in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil. And uh, every man also gave him a piece of man. And everyone an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than the beginning. So people who disappear from you will look for you after this prayer. The things that disappear from your life will bring what is needed. It's not in you to say, how shall it happen? Be careful of nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. But how it's going to come, God will bring those people who had said, ah, that person doesn't, you know, it's useless. They came back carrying something. So, God blessed Job that way. Then you shall move from the bitter waters to the sweeter waters. Then you shall move from your airship. You can't be in an airship forever. Yeah. Then you shall move from the pit to the palace. Then you shall move from your cave of Abdullah. Then you shall move from your Juniper. Then you shall move and God shall open doors of endless possibilities. Amen. Your capacity in this life, you shall be mortal ones. If you choose mediocrity, that's you. But God is saying it's an open check. What things whoever you desire, when you pray believing, you shall have those things. Endless possibilities. When God is silent, God's delays are not his denials. He has not denied you. That thing is still coming. Inside every delay, there is a blessing. Actually, the Lord is good to those who wait upon him. And it is good for a man to both wait and hope and quietly wait. Don't wait mourning and complaining. Yes. So, for God to answer you, you have to go beyond the humanistic realm. Yes. Into a realm of the unseen realities. In the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the super anointing. That's where your answers are all packed. In the realms of perfect faith. In the spheres where you come up higher like John, God can then meet you as you transition from one glory to another. We move from strength to strength, from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from power to power, from anointing to anointing. So you change levels in faith as you embrace your testimonies. There are levels in prayer that when you reach those levels, you realize what you are missing all this time. Amen. There are levels in encounters that when you reach those levels you will never want to drop again when you go higher don't keep dropping keep aiming higher and higher in the spirit you enter the deeper dimensions of God you get to the levels of his presence and the, the next levels of divine experiences and the higher realm where you take a leap of faith and an octave higher in things of God, breaking into spheres and dimensions. We need the Hades of today. We need the Oscars of today. We need the women of faith who can control happenings, control spiritual atmospheres, control financial atmospheres by the power of the spoken word. Jesus says, let us go to the other side. When you know one side of things, you will be content. But when you know there is another side, there is another you that is more prayerful than this you. There is another you that is more blessed than this you. There is another version of you. Let's go to the other side. Yes, when he said let's go to the other side, a storm started because the devil doesn't want you to go to the other side. 
but you shall one day step the other side of your situation the other side of those deaths the other side of that sickness you shall stand rejoicing and praising God your breakthrough has arrived you want to say congratulations because your breakthrough has arrived with persistence and patience you break resistance even if you have been saying that for the last five years keep saying it all the way into it even if you have come for a prayer life for it keep believing for it one day you shall have it faith is the one way there is no reverse in faith I declare that every year must be better than the year before it doesn't matter what currency comes faith will go higher than that when God breaks in silence everything that was limiting you is broken you break your sound barrier you break your unbelief barrier you break your spiritual resistances whatever was a friction when you are praying you must sail freely in the spirit God is able to break your limitation you don't need the devil to measure how far you have to go how far you have to possess when the Bible says you shall have houses and lands, let's count, count them, count your blessings. Before you see those houses, see them in the spirit. Before you see those spiritual levels, see them in the spirit. And then the spirit will take you to what you are seeing. The vision shall speak. That's why, as a husband and wife, you must team together. And say, as a couple, this shall be our couple our highest level so far and next day we break it again God can break your weaknesses God can break the victim mindset you can't be a victory when you have a victim mindset God can break all demonic assignments right there let me say any assignment from the underworld against your destiny let it be broken now There are unseen forces that enter our transactions. There are unseen forces that influence how people see us. There are unseen forces that influence your zeal to go forward. But we defeat all forces that are causing stagnation. You can't work every year and have nothing new. The only thing new is a new white hair somewhere. <laughs> but God says, I make all things new. You can't work like an elephant and eat like an ant. You can't work and put in a bag with walls. It starts with a declaration. It starts with a decision to say, this is not my portion. Amen. Want to break all demonic dreams in your life. When you sleep, let it be visions of rapture. Let it be dreams that glorify God. Your current situation, if it's not glorifying God, let it end here. You know when Hannah came to the temple, she came drinking a problem to his dying place. She was tired of the pain. Do you know that when Hannah came to the church, to the temple that day, we don't read about Penina anymore up to the end of the whole book of Samuel. When she was provoked, she, her faith rose and it closed the chapters of Penina. And we don't actually hear. We, oh, her prayer was so inspired until this part of the Bible. Amen. Her prayer became the word of God. You cannot separate, you cannot end or separate to the prayer, prayer of God. You can pray in the spirit until God says, this is my prayer. The prayer of Habakkuk, the prayer of Anna, the prayer of Nehemiah, the prayer of Esa, the prayer of Solomon. The prayer. Those are people who prayed as we are coming to pray. Until they are prayers, God says, it's not yours, it's mine, it's part of my word. If you have been prayerless, learn consistency in prayer. 
You can't have consistent results when you have flashes of prayer here and there. You will have flashes of results also. If you want to plan mastery, striving for mastery, be temperate in all things. Be consistent. When you have a prayer program, don't be too tired, don't be low and high, don't skip it high every time. You have your own all night prayer meetings even before the church calls prayer meetings. You have your own fastings because you are aware of the spirit world and the dangers of spiritual emptiness. Any delay in your life must be broken. Whatever has delayed your blessing, you want to accelerate your blessing in Jesus' name. Stagnation, I'm coming against it. Let there be progress in your life. January, prayer request cannot be the prayer request for March, cannot be prayer request for April. April is a beam. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. It's a season of new happenings. Let all the old things be buried. Let there be new happenings in your life. Enforcing a change. It takes people who say, enough is enough. If we sit here, we die. Let's go to church and pray about our circumstances. Let's go to church and pray about what is happening financially. We are hearing others in progress, but we are stuck. Let's go and talk to God. You must learn to consult God. I know we have the art of consulting doctors, but I want you to consult God today. This is a consultation night. Forget about your neighbor. You just say, Lord, I'm pouring my heart to you. The results of this meeting must affect even the unborn children who shall be born. Because the results of Solomon's prayer affected those who are going to be born later. He says, if those shall look to the temple, God hear them. You can pray a transgenerational prayer to say, it has run through our family but is stopping today. This BPs, this arthritis, this diabetes, they've run through our family but I don't see them in the heavenly family, in the Hebrews 11 family, they subdued kingdoms. Kingdom of diabetes must be subdued. It's when the witness pain and I'm there. You can't be owing and owing and owing. We are here. I want you to end, 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 enlarge your prayer request. You can't come with two things when you are so empty in your natural life. You can't come with little requests as if God is, those are too big, you are trying God with those ones. Come with a list and turn the page and turn the page and turn the page. Amen. One thing I don't agree is that satanic people who make declarations about your life and say this one won't be married, this one will suffer. And you actually see those things happening in your life. Says Satan through his laws brings sickness, and we see it. What more are standing together, anointed? You are anointed, I'm anointed. We are children of God, and we are saying we are declaring destiny changing matters. Yes, you have to be angry with the devil on the cross very soon. You have to break all distracting spirits in your life. Nothing has been molded, nothing has progressed in your life. You build this fell down, you touch this, crumble down until you have no inheritance for your own self and for your children. Why should the heathen say, where is their God? There must be a difference between the heathens and believers. Yes, if we serve a living God, let's see God in our lives. Let's see God in soul matters, in destiny matters. Let's see God in financial transactions. I should be when I enter a transaction. Right now it's straight fair. People are coming from Arara to showcase things. And we have nothing to show. And we are the super race final voice. One in a million born for such a time as this. Let God raise you. In an unquestionable manner. Breaking sinful habits. Breaking sinful natures. Breaking unscriptural situations in our lives. 
We have to force our lives to align with the Bible, breaking all fears. We have to pull those through obstacles. No matter what they say it about me, if it's not God who says that, it will never happen. Ah, uh, if you dream a dream and you dream it, I will tell you I will never die. If you dream a dream and you see me, you just knock by a car, I will tell you that dream, let's crush it now. I don't fear dreams. I don't fear satanic things. Hey, do you know that even if it comes from God, you have a right to say, Lord, this I don't want. This I don't want. I want to live and preach the gospel. I want to live and point souls to Calvary. So don't allow me to in your life. Don't allow cheap standards. But aim high. God has inspired you and has given you everything needed for you to make it. He has given us all things that pertain to life. Your past must be broken. Whatever was limiting you, whatever is hindering your breakthrough, I want you to think as we are about to close. What is that thing that you have said with your husband and with your children and you are still sitting about that same matter today? And it seems that mountain is not moving. That is where we want to see the power of God. Speak to your mountain today. We are starting a surgical prayer. A prayer that operates too much. I've been hearing a sister Grace Day in Kenya saying she was struck when we started praying online, not live like this. The stroke was reversed. I was hearing Sister Veronica saying right there, she was also in, in case, Kenya or Mauritius. She says she had cervical cancer when we started praying, it just disappeared. You may not be aware of spiritual things in the spirit world that are happening as we are making declarations now. Let me say this. You can draw a question and say, my children don't fail like other children. Amen. You can't struggle to raise school fees and the school fees goes down the drain. You will struggle to raise capital and it goes down the drain. But we must make declarations of faith standing on the promises of God. The message says that uh, a brother will say, I give you rain. So even when other crops are dry, yours must not dry. You must pray a prophetic prayer. A prayer that transports you to where it's going. A prayer that is prophetic where you speak under the inspiration. If your mothers under bed pains could prophesy the destiny of their children, in pain, you know, pain can confuse a person, but they could speak accurately in pain. So today we are going to push in bed pains. The destiny of our ministries, the destinies of our churches, the destinies of soul winners, the destinies in the spiritual, the destinies in the world to come. Rest in prayer. We want nuclear prayers. That nothing of your problem shall remain. Nuclear prayers. That when you just drop it, you say, I'm done with this problem. You are not destined to go around in circles on the same mountain. That is the same thing again. Pray for me. It's the same thing again. You must destroy that thing once and forever and say, in Jesus' name, I break this thing so that even my children won't have to wrestle with the same thing. Amen. Some of the doors that are closed, we have to crush them. Amen. So that our children won't come to struggle again the way we struggled for them to open. Amen. Some of the doors, we have to crush them so that whosoever will be born later will just say, our dead fought this for us, we are going through. What prayers that move mountains? I want you to zero on your mountain today and say, This mountain, do not triumph over me. Be thou removed. And you speak with authority. Name that mountain. Sometimes we get used to our BPs, to those things that we say, Ah, this one I'm, I, I now I can maneuver. But allow God. God is in your soul, I know. 
with the message, with the quotes, with the experiences that you have had, I don't doubt that God is in your soul. But allow that God in your soul to rule every tendon and every fiber and go where the diabetes is. That's right. Our God, when He calls for a conference like this, it's because there are bigger matters than Geneva Conference. There are bigger matters that are to be discussed today, and each one must bring their needs to the altar. You have to prophesy of it. Prophesy the change you want to see. Don't copy another person. You have a unique tragic story. You have a unique path. Prophesy the change you want to see. God is able to open a way where there is no way. Just give it to God. Your pains, your misery, your, your past, your mistakes, your stagnation. Give it all to Jesus today. You find that he's not too busy. You are never too old for God to do a new thing in you. Moses was eight years and he, he did a new thing and he, he saw a new thing. He, he saw a, a stick doing new things. Even at your last breath, do exploits. What God cannot handle does not exist. Whatever you are bringing to God today, you will handle it. Your situation cannot make God a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Your situation cannot be so stubborn that the old doors of the world cannot break your situation. Let me tell you something. I feel like I have to close here because I feel this wave so powerful. We are spiritual beings. We, we deal with the atmosphere. We deal with what the signals. When God moves, we move with that signal. When God opens an avenue of inspiration, we follow that avenue. So you cannot be bound forever as a daughter of God. You cannot be in this message and be in a cage forever. No. You must have that righteous indignation to say, Satan, I declare war today. I'm not a victim of circumstances. My, my tent is no more pitched in that situation. My great, my sister, spiritually, you arrive financially. If you are in the spirit, same spiritual frame, happenings follow the spiritual frame. If the spirit of heaviness is upon you, your body will bow down. If there is a spirit of infirmity, you will be bowed together. But as long as you are loosed, your body will straighten up. Your marriage will straighten up. Your finances will straighten up. Let me tell you that there are some among you that God wants to use in spiritual levels, in spiritual dimensions, and it has to be announced, and you give, become ignited spiritually, and say, now it's my turn. Now it's my chance. I don't care if all oh, hell assails me. There are not enough warrior spirits. There are not enough ancestral kulus. What? Those people have no say in my life. I've decided that I'm going to have an impact in the days of my life. I've decided that this night is my chance for a new level I have not seen. No matter how much I've seen of God, I know there's something more somewhere. No matter how much you have experienced of God, I know there is something more. This night, someone must receive the Holy Spirit today. Praise for him. Are you ready? Let's return to our feet. If you need the Holy Spirit, it's your chance to receive the Holy Spirit now. In the name of Jesus, I engage in war now. I need your help now because we, all of us, as a mighty army, must fight these battles. Fight even for those who are not yet here. Who come on Sunday, they must say something has changed in this church. Even sinners who shall walk, even past outside, must express the vibrations, the effulgence presence of God. Whatever mountain you are facing, my brother, my sister, let me tell you, God is able now. He is not a man that you can lie. And your situation, there is a starting day and it is an ending day. It started somewhere, it has to end today. It doesn't matter how old you are, God can touch you. 
It doesn't matter how young you are. God can use you. It doesn't matter how bound you are. God can set you free. It's never too late to open your heart. Yes. If you have never had that experience, we shout now. In the spirit world, the avenues are open. When God opens the door, no man can shut it. These declarations that I've made, that you are making together as one, we call upon our Father. The pillar of fire is still alive. The angel of the message is still alive. We were praying one day and there was a sister in Uganda online who was paralyzed in her hand. And she saw the pillar of fire touch her hand as we were praying. Only that I'm not a prophet. If I was brother Branham, I would tell you the pillar of fire is upon so and so and so. But I can declare that he is here. That's what I can do. Let me tell you, where we are going from here, if you drop back, it's your own choice. I say no more lower levels. The saints of old found a channel in the spirit of God. Where they stay there and experience powers, raw miracles. When I say raw miracles, I'm not talking about small things. Father, I feel charged in my spirit to bless somebody today. The devil is regretting why he allowed us to be here. Your victory is non-negotiable. Take it by force. Your salvation is non negotiable. Take it by force. Your riches are non negotiable. Take it by force. This night is a night of deliverance. It's a night of the supernatural. I prophesy my own victory. I speak to my own account. I speak new levels, a new source of income to everyone that is here. Those who are not paying tithes, you have to correct because where we are going now, we have no such kind of people. Meet God's requirement, challenge, promise God something, say, Lord, if you do this, I'll give you this. And keep your promise. Keep your promise to God. Those who are having attacks at night in their dreams, those who are having children screaming during service, Let's buy that. Give me your hand, let's agree together. All of our enemies shall come at our feet. I hear the chains are falling now. We are free in Jesus' name. We are shouting the victory. We are shouting every wall of Jericho is crumbling. That desire that brought you here today must be answered. As a deep calling to a deep, there has to be an answer from the unseen world yonder. From the mystic channel, something will come. Those who are bound in fornication, those who are bound in evil habits, those who are struggling to overcome, struggling to listen to tapes, struggling to read the Bible, struggling to pray. Struggling to stay awake even when they are standing. Release it to God. Hallelujah. In the spirit world, when you strike that channel, it is unlimited. Those transactions that were held, and you're trying to push it, and you're trying to push it, favor shall go before you. Favor shall go before you. The God of sisterhood said, even whatever you want. Papa almost assisted you, but God says, leave it to say your things. I do not want to assist you. I want to leave you to say your things. Are you ready to say your things? You cannot block. Why do children are expecting and they are praying and they are pressing on? Let something that they have never seen happen. Let the new levels, Father, that they've yearned for. In this month of April, in this month of April, in this few days remaining, Father, one day, it 
to us. King Joachim was in the prison. And on the 27th the day of the month, which is the day we are entering now, on the 27th day, he came out of prison. And he was given a new allowance every day. Prison garments were removed from him. Heavenly Father, I invite your spirit to search for that bleeding lamb at Queen's Park. That sister who has been so trapped and so oppressed in their crying, say, Lord, there must be a better life than this. There must be a better life than this life of complaining and sorrows and drifting. This life of emptiness, I reject it. This life of poverty, I reject it. This life of cycles, I reject it. This life of poverty, this life of demonic chains, this life of limitations. As we make our declarations, we know the God who promised is more than able to fulfill what he has promised. Father, have your own way. You are a practical God. You are God that answers by fire. You are God that breaks every yoke. The anointing shall break every yoke. Father, as you made this declaration, there are some spirits that try to fight back. I arrest those spirits by the authority given unto me. I see Satan are under our feet. Release them now. In the name of Jesus, let the rushing mighty wind, let the power of the Holy Ghost overshadow your people, Lord. Set them free from their habits, from their natures. Father, those who are not even born again, who are saying, Father, I need the God of the Bible. I need that spiritual experience today. Like Barty Robinson who said, if you don't fill me with the Holy Spirit, you'll find a pile of bones here. Father, we're making that statement to say, Lord, give us the storm where we can point the devil and say, Satan, there you are finished. I know there are real battles that your children are facing. There are storms of life. There are raging seas that they are facing. Oh Lord, Father, but you are the master of the rains. You are God that is in charge. Even when things are falling apart, even if they are almost despairing, I say, Father, may they impress on me. They never give up. May they know that there is a man here that can turn on the light. As we are resting, Father, I know they are daring devils. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Ancestral spirits that don't want them to be married. Spirit that made covenants and deep incantations and divinations. I paralyze all those by the authority that you have given me. As your servants, as your children, we join force in prayer. And say, oh satanic forces, oh witchcraft forces, you are under our feet, Satan. You shall not rise from here anymore. Heavenly Father, restore what your children have lost. Restore their joy. Restore their opportunities. Restore their chances. Father, we're already near and we have already ended the first quarter of the year. And some have toiled and have got nothing. But Father, in thy word, this new quarter of the year shall be a quarter of breakthroughs. Shall be answer after answer. Victory after victory. Breakthrough after breakthrough. Testimony after testimony. I believe testimonies are coming in abundance. There shall be showers of blessings. There shall be visitations in the homes, in the church, in the streets. There shall be a turning of the tides. Heavenly Father, we call upon you. For, forgive all our mistakes. Forgive all our sins. Cleanse us with the high soap of your blood. Wash us, Father, until we are whiter than the snow. Father, have your own way. We are aware that there is a man in this room. The God of the Bible is here, moving from person to person. He's moving in this place, He's looking for those who are downhearted, looking for those who are in desperation, looking for those who are crushed and are heavy laden. Father, may those burdens be lifted by your power, Lord. Heavenly Father, as I have seen that testimony of my brother who was going that 1.2 million. And this evening the testimony came. Father, there is no limit to what you can do to your children. There is no limit to what you can provide. Father, may you do something beyond human levels. May you break records that have ever been known. Father, there are some, Lord Father, 
who are looking for means to do their school and they have no funds. May you open the way for them to get the funds. They are somewhere trying to venture into business. But for the thing, they've been facing losses after losses. I say, Father, let your unseen hand bless them like never before. Let those destructive spirits be arrested. We bind the mamba. We bind all wicked things that are blocking them. All spirits that are causing delays and stagnation. Satan, you know our authority. Release now. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God burn in this congregation. Let the fire of God torment every devil. Satan, you cannot stand now. Release in the name of Jesus. We are fighting terrible, daring devils. And I'm going to expose you, Satan. Release you, the people of God. Release the children of God. You have no part in their lives. You have no part in their family. You have no part in their finances. You have no part in their marriages. You have no part in their prayer lives. Release you, Satan. We pull doors by faith. In the name of Jesus, blessings are coming. Victories are coming. Grace shall locate your people. We read in the story of Job that people had disappeared from his life came back again carrying what he was looking for Father may you raise destiny help us may you raise people who shall be used as pillars to connect the pieces of what we are praying for you told us Father that what things forever we desire when we pray believing we shall have them you said an eventual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much Father I pray as we came all those who are writing exams this year that Father we want high passes no one should be detained the scriptures say they shall be the head and not the tail Father I pray for John Sharips in this church businessmen no matter how many times they fail to rise no matter what opposition has crushed them, this is the season of their rising. We say, Father, all the blessing of Deuteronomy 28, when they are blessed going in, blessed in the field, blessed going out. Father, I bless everyone who is trying every effort to feed their family. Everyone who is trying every effort. No more losses. No more, Father, bad ventures. No more bad partnerships. But, Father, let goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their lives. Father, every sick person, May they be held supernatural. There is a hand that moves in the congregation. There is a hand that dissolves too much. There is a hand that breaks every yoke. There is a hand that opens the way. There is a God who hears our cries. In the name of Jesus, Father. In this solemn moment, where destinies are decided, in this solemn moment, where possibilities Endless possibilities are opening. I know you are shaping new prayer warriors. I know you are shaping and inaugurating new ministers, new courtships, new businesses, new levels in the spirit. As a deer pendant for the waters, something in us is hungering for those old paths, for those waters of Bethlehem. For those levels of authority, for those levels of power, for those levels of results, for those levels, Father, of control in the spirit world. Bless your people, Lord. Those who have been applying the token for their unbelieving husbands, for their unbelieving wives, for their unbelieving children, for their unbelieving parents, for their unbelieving relatives. Father, may, you, may they come, may those people be drawn by your spirit to salvation, that they shall be baptized here. I know, Father, you are moving. I know you are doing the impossible. Let your people press on in prayer. Whatever you are, my brother, my sister, don't get tired. Pray a prayer of faith. We don't want to pray and get tired. Father, I'm in Prayer meetings of Pentecostals, they pray non-stop. We can't be 
deliberate by evening, but most stories will pray all night. Devils are not getting tired. Don't pray a weak prayer. Pray an effectual, fervent prayer. Pray with revelation. Pray knowing that when you are shooting arrows in the spirit, something is happening in your finances. When you are shooting arrows in the spirit, shooting old arrows, spirits are being defeated. Natures and temperaments that are not right. Father, we are claiming what belongs to us. We are claiming our blessings. We are claiming our victory. We are celebrating. Father, let your spirit search that person that must be delivered today. Search that person that is an urgent pressing need. Some are here for other people. They are standing in that camp. For some, Lord Father, who are having sleepless nights, who are facing storms of life. But when the storms of life are raging, you are there, O oh Lord. You are a God who is in charge. You are God who is in control. My desire, my petition, is that there shall be a cloud based of testimonies. Each and every one of us will have super testimonies that we have never reached before. Father, may we also be the testimonies. More than the things that we shall receive, may we receive Jesus in our hearts. More than the things that we shall carry with our hands, may we be living tabernacles of Christ. Work on our character, Lord. Enlarge us like Jabez. Enlarge our capacity. Enlarge our prayer lives. Enlarge our capacity to handle the testimonies that are coming. Father, I pray for that brother who is Jabez today, for that sister who is Jabez today, born in sorrow and surrounded by hard circumstances, who say, Lord, if thou could hear me and spare me from evil that it shall not torment me and you hear their prayer many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers them from all you hear the unspoken requests you hear the cries of the broken hearts father as your child as your servant Knowing the gift that you gave me, knowing my commission, knowing the power of the angel that follows this message, knowing the power of your promises, knowing the power of your covenant, knowing the power of our combined forces as ministers here, let me declare victories upon everyone that is here, Lord. Hear your people, Lord. Raise them. Take them to new levels that they've desired for years. We thank you, Father, and we worship you. We bless you, Holy Name. Somewhere as we are praying, may there be a visitation somewhere. As we are pouring our hearts, confessing every unconfessed sin, have your own way and bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.